Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Health How To channel, where we talk about some great life hacks and easy tips to achieve better health. In this video, we're talking about how to fix shoulder pain, where first we'll talk about some common shoulder injuries, and then we'll get into 16 tips on how to get rid of shoulder pain. Please subscribe, like, and share your best tips that you've found to be super helpful for fixing your shoulder pain in the comment section below. If you have someone in your life who you want to help, please share this video with them too. Also, remember that this video is purely for informational purposes and does not in any way replace any advice given by your own healthcare providers. If the exercises or information suggested aggravate your condition, please stop and ask your healthcare provider for further direction. First off, let's get into how the shoulder actually functions. The shoulder can be thought of as a group of four joints, so it has some pretty complex anatomy. There are a lot of moving parts that have to be timed just right to get the arm to go where you want it to go. We have the shoulder blade, the collarbone, the upper back, and the shoulder joint itself, which is a ball and socket type of joint. The shoulder is also the most flexible joint in the body, meaning it is also the most unstable joint. Think of those unbelievable Olympic gymnasts doing their ring routine where they can spin round and round just through their shoulders. The shoulder also has to be strong enough to lift groceries, children, and your buddy's sofa. There are about 20 muscles in the shoulder complex that have to perform intricate maneuvers to slide through tunnels and pull and twist up the arm, much like a puppeteer operating an old-fashioned marionette, but with 20 strings. Finally, there are some other soft tissues that come into play, such as bursas, which are like fluid-filled pillows that provide cushioning and prevent excessive frictioning, and the joint capsule, which is like a small, tight sock around the shoulder joint that helps with the stability. Any one of these structures, the joints, muscles, bursas, and capsule can lead to shoulder pain, stiffness, and restricted movement, instability, and weakness. The most common shoulder injuries include shoulder tendonitis, which is an inflammation of where the muscle joins to the bone. Often it happens from repetitive movements like gardening, shoveling, or weightlifting. Although inflammation doesn't really sound like a big deal, if untreated, it can cause major pain from six months to over a year. Often the pain can be constant and stop you from sleeping. Rotator cuff tears. Sometimes after a fall or when the shoulder muscle can no longer handle all that repetitive twisting and pulling over time, the muscle can tear, leading to pain and weakness. As if those two injuries weren't bad enough, sometimes shoulder tendonitis and rotator cuff tears can lead to something called frozen shoulder. Often it can happen when you try to baby the shoulder because it's injured which leads to this even more painful condition known as capsulitis. Basically, at this point, the shoulder girdle just seizes up and goes on strike. The shoulder isn't doing anything or moving anywhere, but will just complain loudly all the time, especially when you're trying to get some sleep. And I'm sorry to say, a frozen shoulder can stubbornly last up to two years without treatment. Other shoulder injuries can include dislocation after a fall or sports injury. This can take a number of months to rehabilitate because now the unstable shoulder has lost some of its marionette strings and the shoulder has trouble keeping itself in the socket. Shoulder impingement and bursitis often go hand in hand. That's when the tunnel that the muscle has to travel through has narrowed so much that it's getting pinched every time you lift your arm. This leads to frictioning and then those bursas really start to fill up with fluid to compensate, which leads to an even narrower tunnel and then your muscle has an even harder time sliding through the tunnel. This keeps going until you can no longer lift your arm past shoulder height without feeling like someone is driving a nail into your shoulder. So why does the tunnel get narrow in the first place? Number one, posture. If your shoulders and neck are curled forwards the majority of the day, think of when you use the muscles for hours on end at the computer. The ball of your shoulder gets wedged up against the roof of your shoulder and pinches on soft tissues at the front of the shoulder. Number two, arthritis. Age-related wear and tear or a bad injury can cause an eventual bone-on-bone grinding and decreased joint space. 
Number three, repetitive overhead or push and pull activity. If your job or sport requires a lot of the same arm movements over and over, like an electrician working on lights, swimming, or parts assembly, your shoulders can develop an imbalance where the front muscles are shortened and keep the ball of the socket jammed forwards rather than being centered nicely in its socket. Think of how beautifully nature designed an egg, where the yolk sits right in the middle surrounded by the protective egg white. That's where we want to return the shoulder after an activity. So with all these factors that we've gone through, let's get into some helpful tips that can help get rid of your shoulder pain. Number one, watch your posture. Rounded shoulders or slouch sitting can put more forward pressure on the shoulder and cause pinching or rubbing on the soft tissues leading to tendonitis or tears. Check out some of our other videos for more tips on posture. Number two, if you have pain for more than two to three weeks, it's better to see a healthcare professional like a physiotherapist to evaluate your unique situation, use hands-on techniques to get muscles and joints more freely, and to make sure you are doing the right things. Shoulder pain has a tendency of sticking around for months and can turn into a frozen shoulder if you aren't diligent with managing your inflammation and doing your exercises. Number three, keep your shoulder moving as much as possible throughout the day. Roll your shoulders back where you pinch your shoulder blades together to keep the ball centered in the socket. You can do them when you're using computer, on your phone, at your desk, in school, or standing. You get the idea. Stretch backwards over the back of the chair to get out of a slouch position. Bend and straighten your elbow frequently to avoid stiff biceps. When you go through a door frame, try to reach up and touch it at least once a day. Use ice for the first two or three days for 20 minutes, two to three times a day. Using ice at night can be especially good to relieve nighttime shoulder throbbing. Number five, use a microwavable heating pad when your shoulder feels sore or stiff for 20 minutes. Number six, talk to your doctor about pain relievers or anti-inflammatory medication options. Number seven, focus on doing shoulder stretches first. Range of motion exercises will help keep the shoulder muscles flexible and prevent a frozen shoulder. Try sliding your hand up the wall forwards, sideways, and doing pec stretches. Hold them for 10 seconds and repeat 10 times or as tolerated. Do these two to three times a day to try to avoid a stiff shoulder. Number eight. Do your stretching exercises in the shower. The hot water can really make your exercises more comfortable and allow you to reach further. Number nine, do hanging exercises to help with shoulder impingement. If you feel shoulder pain when you reach up, chances are your your soft tissues are getting pinched under the acromion. A more advanced exercise that you can try is to gently hang onto the monkey bars in the playground or hang onto the railing and pull back with gradually increasing body weight. Number 10. Next work on shoulder strengthening. The key is to target the important rotator cuff muscles that will help keep the ball centered in the socket. One important exercise to include is the resisted external rotation with a resistance band. Number 11. Evaluate your sleeping position. Avoid sleeping on your bad shoulder because it will jam your shoulder forwards. If you want to sleep on your good side, be sure to put a pillow under the bad arm to keep your shoulder from curling forwards. Number 12, evaluate your desk setup. One game changer tip is having a dedicated computer monitor or putting your laptop up on a few books so that the screen is right at eye level and using a wireless keyboard. Have your desk at the right level so that your forearm is supported. Avoid leaning forwards, avoid poking your chin out, and keep your mid-back straight. Number 13. Try using a percussion gun massager on your sore muscles. Avoid lingering on any bony areas. Number 14. Avoid household chores where you only use the bad arm to do back and forth motions like vacuuming, mopping, and raking. Slow down the moment and try to switch back and forth from the good side to the bad side. Number 15, instead of using just your good arm to compensate, try to involve the bad arm. 
For example, use both arms to lift when possible so that the bad arm can get stronger little by little. Number 16. Above all, be patient. Shoulder injuries can take months to heal. There will be a lot of ups and downs in your recovery. Often it will feel like two steps forwards and one step back. Try to stay consistent with your exercise routine and adjust the number of repetitions according to how much pain you feel that day. Lastly, don't beat yourself up if you're struggling to keep up with your previous activities. Ask for help if you need it. If you have some great health tips that help you to fix your shoulder pain, I'd really appreciate it if you could share them down below in the comment section so that we can all benefit in our personal journey to better health. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any health how-to videos where we talk about easy ways to improve your health. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.